It's a funny, the, the thing that is tormenting about failure, the thing that makes failure so devastating is that failure is often associated with the feeling that you're almost there. And those of you who fail know what I'm talking about. And you'll be thinking, you know, but I'm so close. And if I just had a little bit more time, if I had a little bit more resources, if I'd only done this, and, and it's, it's a terrible feeling because down in your gut, down in your gut, you know it's some fish down there somewhere. Oh, can I talk to the real people? You, 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 you. Everybody else laughed at you and said, well, it's your fault. You don't know what you're doing. Maybe it's not meant for you. But in the back of your mind, you said, even though it's not working, I just got a feeling that I'm on the verge of a breakthrough. I came to preach to somebody that's on the verge. What your faith is needed to do is don't move. No, somebody said, don't move. Don't wash your nets. Don't go back to shore. But having done all the stand, stand therefore with your loins. Dead about the truth. Slap somebody and say, stand. Well, I'm running out of money, preacher. Stand. I'm running out of time, preacher. Stand. There they are standing. Who am I preaching to? Good God. And the stranger said to them, because they didn't even know that it was Jesus yet. The stranger, the stranger's just on the bank, hollering at him, saying, Drop your nets on the other side. Say, Okay, we're going to throw our nets one more time. And this, this is where your faith is really tested. When you have been doing the same thing that didn't work, Come on now. in the same place that it didn't work, dealing with the same circumstances that it didn't work, you have a tendency to fall prey to discouragement, and it becomes difficult to do it that one more time. See, it's not just how many times you do it. But it's doing it with God's permission versus doing it on your own. See, I want to break this down because I want you to get this real good. He said, I'll tell you what. At that word, I'll do it again. I know it's too late. It's past season. I'm tired. I'm not at my best. All the situations are against me. But i tell you what. I'm going to do it like you said do it. He said, drop it on the other side. Good God. Now, wait a minute, y'all. Look, 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 y'all. The boat couldn't be any wider than this aisle. They've been dropping it all night over here and caught nothing. Just on the other side of the boat, there are masses of fish. Ooh. I have to stop a minute and praise him myself. Can I begin to think about how God will hold up your blessing? And it'll look like it's too late. And it'll look like you're never going to get it. And the devil will be laughing at you. And your enemies will be making fun of you. But God said, I'll hold your blessing until you come to your senses. And not one thing that I have for you will get away. So look, 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 y'all. At the opiate of their failing experience, look at how close they were to their greatest victory. When you have experienced your greatest failure, that's when you are closest to your greatest victory. Let me show you. The Bible said that when he cast his net, on the other side, he took in a great multitude of fish. The King James Version said, fishes. Yeah, a great fishes. 
It's not good English by contemporary definitions. But look at somebody say fishes. You just expect a little bit of fish, but God said it's going to be fish ish. It's going to be pressed down. It's going to be shaken together. It's going to be running over. You're going to see why you had to go through everything you had to go through to get to this next blessing. Look at somebody say fish ish. Look at somebody say how's this. Look at somebody say properties. Look at somebody say buildings. Look at somebody say businesses. Look at somebody say a hundredfold. No matter how much planning and preparation you do, you have to take that step into activation. And part of the reason why you must take that step and you are pushed into taking that step is because the anointing that's down on the inside of your life is in demand. It's in demand. Right now, in this season, in this culture, there is an anointing that God placed down on the inside of you, and it is in demand. That is a word for somebody. If you don't take anything else out of this message, if I closed it up right now, you've got to know that God did not just give you an idea, that God did not just give you this thing in your head. He gave you an anointing that this world needs, and if it stays inside of you, then the world is going to be robbed of what it really needs you are in demand. I don't care what they say on Instagram. I don't care who's popular right now. I don't care who has the most followers. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about what's in demand for what God wants to do in the earth. And if you look at what culture says is in demand, you will miss what the kingdom says is in demand. And when the kingdom says that something is in demand, you got to listen because when the kingdom thing is in demand, then darkness has got to back up. When the kingdom thing is in demand, then demons start trembling. And wars start ending and mental health becomes saved and art is created with conscious why because the kingdom is in demand baby the kingdom the kingdom is in demand the kingdom is in demand the kingdom is in demand who is the kingdom the kingdom are those who do the work of our father the kingdom is in demand God needs what's down on the inside of you I don't care kingdom and it never goes out of season kingdom, the anointing that God placed on the inside of you is in demand. We need it now. We need it now. And somebody's been planning and somebody's been preparing. Somebody is afraid to unleash what God has given them. And God told me to tell you that the reason why he gave it to you is because he thought he could count on you to release it when it was in demand. We need your leadership. We need your music. We need your art. We need your ideas. We need your wholeness. It is in demand. I don't know who that is for because I'm all out of sequence and it is not how my message is supposed to go. But I came here to wage war with the thoughts that are down on the inside of you, trying to make you believe that you are regular, regular, and that someone else could come around and be who you are. No, 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 honey. The reason you are still in this earth is because there is something that God says only you can do and it is in demand now and that's why all hell has been breaking out around you and through you but I hear God saying that I came to cause peace to the storm so that who you are can rise to the top Hmm. hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, your mind needs to know that you're in demand. Somebody's mind has been waging war with them, trying to make them give up, trying to make them back down, trying to make them think that because someone else started that they don't have to get started. But I came here to push you into your destiny. Mary has this moment with Jesus and she goes, I got to push you into your divinity. You've been planning for this moment. You've been preparing for this moment. Give me a little bit more bass and the microphone because I got some work to do and I'm not going to lose my voice playing with the devil. We got something to do in this place Mary had to push Jesus 
she pushed him she pushed him because he was waiting for an hour but she wanted him to know this can get started whenever you're ready because you planned and you prepared properly for the moment you're now standing in. Oh God, I don't know who you are because now I didn't skip down to the end of my notes. But Mary is looking at a version of Jesus that is not the little boy she raised. When Jesus was 12, he was teaching in the temple and she had to pull him back because he got activated before he was prepared. You were gifted, you were talented, you just weren't prepared. And sometimes when you get pulled back, it makes you afraid because you don't know when you should get started again. Somebody in this room got pulled back, not held back. You gotta know the difference between getting pulled back versus held back. I hear God saying that thing that pulled you back ain't holding you anymore. So now you can start preparing like you're waiting for your hour to come. I hear God saying something had to take his hands off of you. It pulled you back, but it didn't hold you down. 